All right, hey, if you like these videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. All right, now, I'll play this banjo for you, and then I will uh, explain what somebody did to it uh, so you can get that uh, pre-war sound kind of not very, without having to spend a lot of money. So let's, uh, let's do it first. <laughs> Okay, so I told you I was going to explain uh, what we did. So we took a, uh, a two-piece flange four. Okay, now the Model 4 two-piece flange, you may not even know what that is, but basically it's a mahogany banjo, okay? Made in 1928, so it's got that sound, that magical sound uh, that comes from having correct resonator, an old resonator, and an old shell. That magic that cannot be duplicated with uh, modern uh, instruments, modern materials. It just doesn't happen. So you can either buy something that comes out of the factory totally original, or you can buy something that is closer to it, okay? So what we have here is a, uh, as I said, two-piece flange, and we put all one-piece flange hardware on it from Pruka, okay? All that's brand new. And then uh, we put out on a uh, Tim Davis neck. Tim Davis making a lot of banjos, a lot of necks, very good builder. He put the uh, Hearts and Flowers neck on there. Neck is made out of mahogany, and you can see that. Okay, now this is a mixed pattern, which is kind of interesting. That's very interesting, because that pattern only occurs on actually one banjo. Uh, and I, I even know what the name of that banjo is or the number of it. I think it's 9530-4, I think has this pattern on it. Anyway, so, okay, so that's the neck, that's the resonator. Then we take the resonator off of it, and, uh, well, you notice it's a Gibson. You look at the inside and you see the chalk, okay, and then you see the serial number, okay. Now, what has been done to this banjo, uh, it, occasionally it's not, it's not a widespread thing. In fact, I was visiting Steve Huber and he had an old uh, Granada that he had done this to. So, essentially, just so you know what we're getting here, here's a, a shell that came out of the Gibson factory and this is exactly how it came out. And this shell matches that resonator, okay? So what uh, the two-piece flange have is they have a, uh, a three-quarter inch uh, shell when you measure it's three-quarters wide. And the one-piece flange, which is the more popular, has a, a five-eighths inch shell. So essentially they took an eighth of an inch, they just uh, took it off the shell, and then they were able to, to uh, put a one-piece flange on it. Okay. 
I don't know if I explained that quite right, but essentially what you, you have, you have a banjo that has the same dimensions of Earl's banjo, okay, just to get right to the point. Then uh, we put, in this case, it has a first quality tone ring in it. Uh, we put it together, put a good neck on it, good neck fit, and all of a sudden you essentially got a one-piece flange conversion, okay? Now, a really good one-piece flange conversion, all original metal, is going to run you 8500 to 10500 okay? You can buy this banjo for a fraction of, of the cost and essentially have that pre-war magic sound that everybody wants. And that's it. Now, if you want to see some more pictures of it, um, you can uh, go to banjowarehouse.com. You can call Andy at 404-372-5482. Uh, you can come visit us. Uh, we actually have visitors and don't have a lot. So if you come and visit us, you can stay for four or five hours, doesn't matter. And it's usually just Andy or I and one and you. So it's not, you know, in the times of virus, you're not gonna be in a crowd if you come visit us. Um, and, and, and that's pretty much it. Now, you should see these on, in the photographs, and I forgot to mention this, but, and this is pretty minor detail, but Ronnie Bales, who's built a lot of banjos, famous builder, he, for some reason he decided to inlay some marquetry right on the bottom here, okay? It, I mean, that means absolutely nothing. It's just a decorative detail, but, you know, the original ones were plain. But I just thought I'd uh, try to explain everything since this is... Um, an in instrument you won't find very often and then listen to the video I think you'll find that it's a superior sounding instrument and it's for that sound it's a really inexpensive way to get that sound so that's it so uh, I guess we'll talk to you later and you guys have a great day